Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. Uh, fall is upon us, or basically, I mean, Siri, when does autumn start? Fall begins September 22nd, 2021. Okay, so I know everybody always says, oh, it's September and it's fall. It's technically still summer right now. Um, but the, the season is upon us, which is why for September I decided to uh, do two pumpkin themed recipes. Uh, we're going for a sweet recipe for this one. And next time in two weeks, we're going to do a savory one that I am really excited about. Um, so for this one, we're going to make a quick bread. We're gonna make a pumpkin bread with crystallized ginger folded into the batter. Uh, and this is from the America's Test Kitchen Cookbook, TV show cookbook, which you know I love and am obsessed with to the point where I bought it and it is now on my Kindle. I love it. It is a very large cookbook. It is available on Libby. You can buy it for your Kindle. And we do have the very large cookbook on our shelves at the library. It's awesome. Uh, so this is a basic pumpkin bread recipe. It makes two loaves. I'm trying to have it today, so we'll see if it works out. Um, <laughs> And then there is an extra um, option if you would like to make it with candied ginger. So that's the one that we're gonna do today. Um, and then yeah, the one that we're gonna do next week is like a soup, I'm really excited for it. The recipe's on our website right now. You can get both of these pumpkin recipes together in one document to print and follow along, cook and try. Um, I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. And we are going to get started with, the, there's a topping on this bread. Oh my goodness. Um, I guess like a little crumble topping. I've never made it before, so we're gonna see. Um, but it's basically some light brown sugar. I don't have light brown sugar. Um, I have dark brown sugar. I also have coconut sugar made for the topping. I'm gonna use coconut sugar. No, I think I already measured it with light brown sugar. So I'm gonna use dark brown sugar. It's fine. Um, it's just sugar, flour, butter, ground cinnamon, and salt. Because we're making the ginger version, it says to um, do half, ginger, half ground ginger and half cinnamon in the topping. So, let's see. So I have a little bowl with some unsalted butter right here. Salted butter. So I'm not going to add any more salt to this topping. Maybe I will just a touch. Um, but you should use unsalted butter and that calls for an eighth teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna use salted butter and just do a little crack of salt because I love these salt crystals. Um, I use the coarse Himalayan salt and I think it'll be a nice pop of savory salt in the topping. Um, I have my ground ginger here, ground cinnamon. Um, I'm going to get my flour and my sugar. Okay, let's do that. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? So reverse. Um, it starts with the topping, but also it does say that we are going to actually cook our wet ingredients over the stove first. So while this is heating up, while the wet ingredients are heating up, that's when I'll make the topping and then just kind of put that to the side. Um, so what you're going to do is combine pumpkin puree, some salt, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves in a large saucepan over medium heat. Cook until it is reduced about six to eight minutes. So that'll be a good time for us to make the topping. So I already have my pumpkin puree measured over here. Right here, so I'm gonna put that in here. I'm gonna measure out my spices. This is just plain pumpkin puree. There are no spices, oh hello, there are no, <laughs> I'm gonna have to fix that. There are no spices in here already. You don't wanna get the pumpkin pie mix that has spices in it already because you wanna be able to season it yourself. We really wanna get the right balance of flavors. So this is just plain pumpkin. There's nothing in it. Hang on. Oh, that's because this is falling a little bit. Okay, that's better. Um, let's see, so now we need also our salt, a little bit of salt and the nutmeg, cinnamon, and cloves. A little bit of salt, brings out all the flavor. I'm gonna get my measuring spoon. Okay, what am I doing here? I've got one and a half teaspoons, so I'm just gonna do about 
about three quarters. of a teaspoon, so I'm going to do half of that, about an eighth of a teaspoon. And just a scant bit of cloves. Cloves are super strong. Um, it's calling for about an eighth of a teaspoon, so I'm just really going to do a little bit here. Because they are strong. Um, some of you may remember the time I told the story about how I once had a friend, we were making kale chips, and my friend accidentally put, um, instead of cayenne on our kale chips, put cloves on our kale chips. It was an adventure. We managed to wash most of it off because we realized the mistake, um, but there were still some kale chips that had um, an interesting flavor to them. So I'm just going to stir this all up and just keep this on a lower heat. Um, I don't want it bubbling and boiling over everywhere here. Make sure all the spices are well incorporated. There's a few pockets of cinnamon here. Let's get rid of that. And it's immediately going to make your kitchen smell like fall, even though technically today it is still summer. So now we can make, I'm gonna put this in the sink. Now we can make our topping. So I've got my butter, as I said, let me go grab my flour. shake that in because it's only about um, a quarter teaspoon of each. Okay. You definitely don't want to use fresh ginger for this. The, the dry ground ginger is better. Uh, the flavor is just better for this uh, in this particular application. A little bit of salt. Oh, and I need my brown sugar. Okay. Let's see if this is bubbling a little bit. I'm just going to stir it because I just don't want anything to scorch. And by cooking it, we're releasing all of the flavors and the spices. Um, and we're also getting some of that um, tinny taste out of the canned pumpkin. Um, okay. Let me just get just a little bit of light brown sugar. Okay. Which I think I already said is actually dark, so it just has a stronger flavor. It's got more molasses in it. So this is calling for five tablespoons, so I'm gonna do two and a half. There it is, and it says just use your fingers and mush it up. Give this a stir again. So we're supposed to let this reduce a little bit. We're trying to get some of the excess moisture out of this pumpkin as well. 
Anyway, as usual, I'm kind of doing this like hacky hacky at this point, um, or like semi correct. Um, again, a little light brown sugar, dark brown sugar, but also this recipe also calls for buttermilk, which I don't have. Um, so I use coconut milk with some lemon juice in it uh, for that tang. And also vegetable oil. I don't use vegetable oil in my house. I don't keep it around. So I'm actually gonna use applesauce. So we definitely wanna make sure that the moisture is cooked out of this. Um, while I'm chatting, I'm just gonna mix this with my hands just to get like wet, the wet sandy consistency. So mush that butter up. Um, so I'm gonna use applesauce. So we really need to make sure we are getting some of the excess moisture out of here because the applesauce will add it back in um, as, as would the vegetable oil, but applesauce just lends a really nice moisture um, content. It's a great replacement for oil in your baked goods. still mushing this together, getting my hands all buttery. Broken line topping should resemble wet sand. And also just make sure while you're in here with this brown sugar, just make sure you're breaking apart any tough clumps. Um, sometimes your brown sugar can kind of get, even if you think it's really soft, um, which mine is, thankfully I haven't used it in a while. I'm surprised that it's still soft and not rock hard. Um, you might get those little just Little, oh, there's one right there. Little tiny rocks of just hardened brown sugar. And so you just want to break those up with your fingers as best as you can. Massage them in with the butter. All right, mine looks better and it smells delicious. Oops, I have some little chunks of butter that I want to break up a little bit. All right, it smells really good in here. I guess because I've added the ginger now, I feel like it smells like I'm making ginger bread and it's wonderful. Oh. Delicious. All right. All right, so this is what it looks like. You see that it kind of is very sandy. Oh, there's another little brown sugar rock and you can just crush it up with your fingers, your strong, strong fingers. Okay, so we're just gonna put this to the side because we're gonna put this on top. Try to get as much of it off your fingers as you can now at this point, because that's the good stuff. Good stuff, we want it. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is then remove the pot from the heat and add in our sugar, brown sugar, applesauce, and some cream cheese. This recipe also calls for cream cheese. Amazing, let me wash my hands. give this a stir make sure that it's dry up a little bit actually that looks great so this is what it looks like I'm gonna turn the heat off and so let's see we're gonna add in our sugars um, so here's my white sugar and brown sugar I did a little less brown sugar than as called in the recipe again because I'm using dark brown sugar instead of light brown sugar so it's a really intense flavor but also because I'm using the candied crystallized ginger, which has, is coated in sugar. Um, so that's just a lot of sweetness for me personally. So I reduced the amount of my brown sugar a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this in here. Ooh, it smells good. Okay. Um, the applesauce, which is about a quarter of a cup. Remember, this is instead of oil. If you use vegetable oil in your cooking, you're going to use your vegetable oil. I'm using applesauce. But I think it goes really well with this fall theme. Oh, too much, too much, too much. You watched it happen. You saw it happen. All right. There we go. That's perfect. We're good. Okay. <laughs> Put this in the sink. Um cream cheese. It's about two ounces for, for my purposes, about two ounces of cream cheese. And I'm just start to stir this a little bit. 
Um, and we're just going to use the residual heat from this to, right, we're just going to use, yeah, to kind of melt that cream cheese. So I'm just going to kind of cut this in here just to let it sit um, again so that residual heat from the pot can just kind of make this melt down and it's all going to become nice and homogenous you know I like that word but actually the cookbook uses that word too I always talk about making sure our mixtures are homogenous there are no chunks no separation so that's what we're looking for with this cream cheese okay so let me just give everything a good stir I'll bring the camera closer so you can see what it looks like at this point. Let's see, so let's see. Stir until combined, let mixture sit for five minutes. This cream cheese is gonna kind of break down a little bit and then we'll stir it really well just to make sure that everything is combined and there are no chunks of cream cheese. It did, however, just step on some pumpkin because Licorice loves canned pumpkin, so I fed her a spoonful of it. And she flipped a spoon over on the floor and I just stepped in it. Okay, let's show you what this mixture looks like. There we go, see that's what it looks like right now. Everything is nice and uh, the, the sugar is melting down. Uh, we don't really want any chunks of sugar. We're gonna let this cream cheese warm up so that we can get rid of that as well. There are no chunks of cream cheese. And I guess in the meantime, we're going to work on our dry ingredients. Let's see. Um, oh, we're gonna whisk together some eggs and buttermilk first. Hang on. Um, again, no buttermilk. So I did coconut milk with some lemon juice for that tang. Right, let me put the, we're done with the brown sugar and the applesauce. Let me put these away. And the, oh, the eggs are right here. So I did put the lemon juice in here. It doesn't really curdle the same way because it's not milk. It doesn't have the same proteins and properties. Um, but it is a tangy, milky substance. So I'm going to do that with my eggs. Let me get my whisk. And then we'll add that into here. And again, this is not boiling hot because we've taken it off the heat, but the stove, uh, but the pan is still warm. So that'll bring our eggs to temperature without scrambling them. So let me crack my eggs in this bowl. I'll bring this bowl over here so you can see. Then we'll do the dry ingredients and put them in there. Okay. Eggs. All over my hands, gotta wash my hands. And clean the counter when I'm done. Okay. Oh, no, I got egg on the counter. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So it's breaking down a little bit, but I think I need to like mush it. Okay, so let me whisk these things together, my eggs and my fake buttermilk. Okay, last drop, last drop, okay. Whisk this together. Again, we're going for homogenous. I don't wanna see any streaks of egg white in here. Um, we just want to make sure it's all mixed together well, and that means it'll mix together nicely in our batter. The fat from the egg yolks acts as like a, a binder, and the fat makes it more moist. Uh, the egg whites provide rise and protein, fake protein. Oh, look, there's protein in here. <laughs> Next, 
And now I'll do the dry ingredients while I'm still waiting for these cream cheese chunks to break down. used a bigger bowl for more vigorous whisking, but it's okay. So let's see, we're going to do egg whites on my hands. Okay. I need to clean up as I go. It's a mess. Okay. Okay, so we've got flour, baking powder, and baking soda. That's it for our dry. Um, so I'm doing a cup of flour. The recipe that I provided on the website, if you're following the recipe on the website or you'd like to, is the full recipe that makes two loaves. Again, I'm having it. What am I going to do with two loaves? All right, let's, let me grab one cup of flour. All right, here's one cup of flour. Um, and then let me grab my baking powder and baking soda. And then do the mental math in my head to cut this down. It is baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder. One, two, three. Just a quarter of the baking soda. And then just make sure that this is also likewise all mixed together. You don't want any pockets of the baking soda or baking powder. That's first of all would taste gross if that's the piece that you happen to get. And also you just want if we're looking for an even rise all over the cake, you just need everything to be mixed together really well. Cake, technically bread, put bread here. Okay. Good, 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 good. Make sure that this is mixed together. Let me grab my other whisk. No pockets, no pockets, no pockets. the flour into the pumpkin not enough room for that so we're going to do the reverse and then we're going to add the candy ginger at that point uh, it's like the last thing that we fold into the batter this recipe also calls for walnuts i don't eat walnuts um but you then at that point you also add in the walnuts you could do pecans if you wanted you could do no walnuts Maybe you could do chocolate chips. I mean, you could just take this base recipe and kind of mess with it, which is what America's Test Kitchen usually does with a lot of their recipes. Uh, if you have this cookbook, you'll know that after a lot of the recipes, there's a, okay, you could also, you know, substitute this for this and follow instructions as, as written, you know, kind of a thing. They have a lot of that in there, which is, again, what this one is. All right. So I turn the heat off and I let it sit again for five minutes or so. I still have some chunks of cream cheese. It's really not bad, but you can tell it's melted in because the color is now lighter. Um, and the chunks that are in there are pretty small. So I'm gonna continue the process. I'm gonna pour in my eggs and my fake buttermilk. Just make sure that I am stirring as I go. I'm 
gonna switch to my whisk. And just make sure this is really well incorporated. Don't give any egg curdles a chance to form, but it should be cool enough now. And the eggs are pretty much room temperature. And then it's gonna thicken up too really nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my flour, my dry mixture that's right here. Um, and then we bake for about 45 minutes. Oh, I need to add my ginger too once I do that. Okay, so let's put this in the sink. This over here. So you can see the cream cheese, there's still some chunks of cream cheese, but it's not as bad as it was at all. Scrape this all out. Switch back to my spatula. I'm gonna fold this in and then add the um, personalized ginger once this is all well incorporated. It says that some lumps are okay. Remember, we don't want to overwork our flour because those glutens will get very tough. You're going to end up having a very dense, chewy cake. So that's why we fold gently. We want it to be well incorporated, no pockets of flour, but we don't want it to be overworked. Right, make sure you're really getting underneath. See all that dry flour? You gotta get all that dry flour. Nice and gentle. Yep, so small lumps of flour are okay. Usually just kind of like with pancakes, I tell you some lumps are okay. It works itself out. Grab my crystallized ginger. This is just about ready. I love ginger. I love crystallized ginger. So good. And just as I'm doing these last few folds to incorporate the flour, we'll get that ginger in there as well. Right? I don't want to be done mixing in the flour and then fold in the ginger because again, that's you're going to overwork your flour. Don't want to overwork those glutens. They are temperamental. Okay, so this is my batter now. I have my loaf pan over here. Scrape it in. And then we're going to sprinkle the topping on top and put this into my oven. Topping, I'm going to sprinkle it. I'll show you what it looks like. I'll bring it up to you. Crowd the counter, you know how it goes. All right. Nice and evenly. Oh, this is going to be good. I don't think I've had this much sugar in a really long time. It's a lot of sugar, but I'm pretty excited for it. Let's be real. Okay, 
is what it looks like with the crumble topping right on top. Very good. I'm going to get this into my oven right in the middle. minutes and then we have to let it cool so actually I'll come back more like an hour we'll see all right I'll see you then okay so we're back I have my loaf out of the oven so what I did was I cooked it I think for me it was about 55 minutes um, I just tested with a wooden skewer and the first time I did it 45 minutes exactly it was still very moist about 10 minutes later it was much better um, so then I pulled it out of the glass pan and I let it cool on a baking rack. It's been about half an hour or so. So we're going to cut in and dive in. Um, I mean, it smells really good around here. So let's see what happens. It's like kind of nice and crisp on the top from that sugar and butter topping. Let's see here. Oh, I know I can see there are a couple of nice pieces of ginger in here. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Very nice. Let me grab my plate. All right, let's get a closer look. So it's nice and moist on the inside. It's got some nice air pockets. Um, look at that. There's definitely enough ginger in there. That's exciting. And then you can see, and hopefully hear, how this sugar and flour and butter mixture crumble came out on top. It's just like a little crisp and it smells, ugh, it smells like fall in here. All right, let's take a bite. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, it's chewy. Um, <laughs> especially the ginger pieces. It's good. I feel like it could have used a little bit more. Maybe I needed a little bit more salt and a little bit more spice. Very pumpkin-y. It's actually not too sweet, which I was worried about, but I, like I said, I did hold back a little bit on some of the brown sugar. I think it needs just a touch more seasoning, like some of the spices, but actually it's really good. And exactly how I thought the little burst of sea salt mixed into my crumb topping on top, really good. Mm. Definitely the pieces with the ginger taste the best because it's just a little extra kick, but it's also gotten nice and soft with a little bit of chew. It's really good and it's very pumpkin-y. It's very soft and it's a little chewy, probably from the applesauce um, as opposed to using oil maybe. I don't know, but it's not tough by any stretch of the means at all. <laughs> mm. It's really good. It's really good, I could eat this forever. You know what, maybe warm it up and do a little bit of salted honey butter on top and sprinkle with a little cinnamon powder oh boy that would be mm. it def I definitely love the pieces with the ginger the ginger really makes it something special mm -hmm. it's outstanding and i've got this whole loaf now actually i just texted my mom and i said i'm coming to your house with a loaf of pumpkin bread so it's really good though wow okay i 
again, America's Test Kitchen did not do me wrong. Mm. I can always count on them for a good recipe. Okay, so that's it for, sorry, I had to eat that whole piece. It was really good. That's it for this week for book cooks. Again, we use the America's Test Kitchen TV show cookbook. This is the latest edition for 2021. I bought mine on my Kindle, but you can also get it on Libby or come to the library and get it. We have a hard copy. It's huge, but there's so much to look through and every recipe I've tried so far has been a winner. Not one disappointment in sight. So next time, uh, two weeks from now, we are going to make um, a soup. I think I said that we're gonna make a soup. Uh, it's like a corn, shrimp, pumpkin bisque, and I'm very excited for that. So that will be our next one. Recipes are up on our website right now. Don't forget, come come on into the library, come check it all out. Um, if you're looking for a cookbook, our cookbook section is huge and very well loved. Mo one of the most popular sections in our nonfiction area. So come check it out. I'd be happy to show you. All right, everyone, I will see you all soon. Bye.